positions. But you have one good judge, at least so far, who understands the problem. And she asked the government, give me an example of what it means to materially support terrorism. He couldn't give her an answer. And he also, she also said, well, can you guarantee, you know what these people are doing, they're writing articles, can you guarantee that that will not trigger inattention? And he said, I, I can't provide a guarantee. And so that it helps show what's really, really going on. It helps turn the mask off. So any of these, these people that voted for this, like Alan West and others who voted for, for the NDAA, they no longer have an excuse. You've got a federal judge saying, yes, this is what it does. It's not just me saying that. It's a federal judge now saying that. So that's very helpful for us because it wakes people up and allows us to, uh, to you know, be able to say, look, we're not conspiracy theorists. We're, we're actually just pointing out. Well said. Doing. My stream just died for a moment. Yeah. Rob, come relaunch the stream. We still got it going on this one, but this is so important. Let's go ahead. I mean, I mean, we are seeing the total tyranny come to fruition. Did I hit a button wrong or something? You might have. Uh, it's connecting. If you, just, if you just tap that screen, it's very sensitive. I got video as well if you need Real it. Alex Jones and Facebook forward slash Real Alex Jones. <laughs> and, and we're doing this on Ustream. We're doing it on Justin TV, uh, PrisonPlanet.tv, our own servers. We've got it all free right now. And I haven't even been pl plugging sponsors and things that pay for everything, but I just want to s salute everybody that's been out here. It's really been an amazing job. Stuart Rhodes is here with us. And it's easier to actually do interviews out here because it's so wild out there on the scene. And we are connecting now. We are back. Okay, Stuart, continue with the NDAA and the judge. Well, this federal judge has, has done the first step in standing up, which is what the judiciary should be doing. Um, I'm not too confident that the courts of appeals are going to back her up. I'm, I'm pretty skeptical. But there's hope. I hope that judges, other judges, including the Court of Appeals, will recognize the absurdity of exposing the American people to arbitrary attention like this. Because of course it's going to chill free speech. Of course it's going to be used against people who are dissidents. That's what's happened throughout history. And so the judges pointed that out and said, you can't guarantee that you will not use their speech as a criteria for detention. And the government lawyer said, no, I can promise, no, I give no guarantees to anybody. So it's like wide open. The president can detain anybody. And the wants. president said, I'll, "I'll kill citizens if I want." Yeah, he's already said he's already done it. So three American citizens, including a 16-year-old boy. So you know they're telling us, like I told the legislature yesterday in North Carolina when I, was, when I was there in front of the legislature, I said, "I challenge anyone to show me the distinction between the powers that are being claimed and used by Obama and Bush before him that's any different than the powers that were held in the hands of Joseph Stalin or Adolf Hitler." Well, actually, Joseph Stalin had at least, you know, the secret dungeons and things, and they would act like there was freedom on paper from one of my studies. So did the Nazis, but they did it secretly. And this is one of the most overt things I've ever seen. This is back to, like, divine kings where they just say off with the head. This is pre-Magna Carta. Do you agree with that statement? Um, well, I think, I think it certainly wipes away everything that's, that's, that's come since the Magna Carta, everything that came in our Bill of Rights, everything our revolution was fought for. Um, the Nazis, though, did, did things legally as well. They had the Reichstag Fire Decree, which was kind of like their Patriot Act. They had the Enabling Act, which was essentially their version of the NDAA. So they did legalize everything they did through statutes. And they set up special courts called the People's Courts, which were political opponents of the state. And then they would put them in a second track. That's what's being done here, is, is the creation of a second track. That's right. They're creating their little secret courts, their Pentagon courts, their, right. their, their military courts. Special procedure. And, and as you pointed out before, you may never even get a chance to go talk to even a military judge because the president claims the authority to simply kill you with a hellfire missile strike. I told the legislature yesterday. And now they're launching the drones. I talked to insiders during the census two years ago and they said, no, this is for the Pentagon. It's four drones that are right. marking your front door. Everybody's like, that's ridiculous. Now they just go, yeah, the census data, your front door, weaponized drones. Well, I just talked to a retired military officer yesterday. They came to his property line to do, this, to do the census thing. And he said, well, just do it here. She said, no, I have to, I've been told I must do your actual front door. He said, well, what do you mean? This is where my mailbox is. This is where I live. Do it here. And she wanted to do his front door. He said, go get a warrant. Come back with a warrant. So, yeah, they're being told to go to the front door. That's what I do. GPS the front door. And I tell them because the, they can ask one question. How many people live there for apportionment of the legislature? That's it for the Congress. And now they want to have a yearly one, and they're making businesses do it every year now, and it's just made up. Right. Uh, courts have said it's a fraud. But, I mean, it's just all this lawlessness. It's, it's totally lawless. Or overcoming Iraq. In Iraq, you want to, look, want to see our future, go look at Iraq. In Iraq, they have coordinate search. They have green zones where you're not allowed to go or special places for them only. 
and then they also have Predator drones flying through the sky, and any Iraqi at any time could be hellfired for, for the Predator drone based upon decisions made in secret on a secret list that no one can review. That is what's being brought here at home. They're making there's no legal distinction between the Iraqis and us now. So they argue. And the TSA is now on the highways. They're now at concerts. They're now at high school football games. I mean, this they're getting. This is martial law. They are phasing it in. Right. It, it's it's treating the American people like an occupied, conquered enemy nation. Here's my next question. I haven't had yawn since this. What do you make of 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 them? And now in just the Senate three months ago, but a month ago, I had Walter Jones about this in the House. They said, yes, we get our orders from the UN and NATO, and we don't come to you unless we want to. Oh, well, sure. I mean, this yeah. is this is the most brave. I mean, at least Julius Caesar was a dictator, but he was Roman. I'm not defending that, but that was the classic archetypal tyranny. Now, the president says, I take foreign orders. I'm getting chills right now. Yeah. I think this is the one thing that's finally waking people up. I mean, it is amazing. What do you call that as a constitutional law scholar and a, a military you know, historian veteran yourself? Uh, treason. Panetta is telling, told the Senate, we don't need to come to you. We may let you know what we're doing, or we may not. We're going to go to the United Nations and NATO for our authority. So international law is the only law they're recognizing as anything they have to pay attention to. So it's, the Senate is becoming a debating club and rubber stamp. And it's but really, I mean, it's that, means, that means that European special interests have officially conquered the U.S. This is the notice. I mean, if they're able to push this fraud, if they're able to sell that idea, that's it. Well, what they're saying, what they're saying is, is Obama is is essentially the president of the world, and he's going to go to the World Congress, not the U.S. Congress. And so it's the same mindset we've seen. But the euro itself is run by the unelected bureaucracy. Right. So it is the banksters. Well, that's a good question. I don't know. So we're, we're pulling the strings of the United Nations. But I, I see it as a good thing, though. The more they do things like this, the more they take the mask off and throw it in your face, the more Americans wake up. Like the NDAA is a gift. I see it as a gift. I like it. Just look at the intolerable acts at the time of the founders helped to crystallize resistance. This is the same thing. It was already going on anyway. Obama had already killed American citizens, and Bush had already detained American citizens, but the NDAA made it very clear. Well, let me tell you this. They have Marines as diplomatic security with the Marine Corps plates, and it was four years ago they were harassing us, wearing clown masks, flipping us off. We got photos of it. Coming to our hotel, asking if we were playing violence, acting like they're patriots, and kind of threatening us off the side. They were driving in and out today, shaking their heads at us, like with disgust, like we were the bad guys. They are so warped mentally, these Marines, I guess it's diplomatic security brainwashed, that they really think we're the bad guys. They think inside there, the diplomatic stuff's getting done and things. Hmm. But it's really a bunch of foreign banks taking the country over. Right. I mean, imagine them shaking their heads at Americans and families. I mean, what do you say to them? Well, this, this, is, this is the problem, is that this is the rise of the new aristocracy and the new royalty, the international royalty. And there are plenty of people out there who think that's the way it's supposed to be. They don't understand what we're supposed to be like in a, in a dual sovereignty republic under our constitution. They don't understand that. They don't know what the Logan Act is. They don't understand how many, much that's going on in there is probably a violation of the Logan Act. They don't understand these things. So that's what we have to do is, is re-educate them. They've been indoctrinated and brainwashed. And we have to try to deprogram them. But, uh, I mean, it's incredible. What do you make of finally the Washington Post 